Bismillahirrahmanirrahim نوايت تعلم وتعليم وتذكر وتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والفارة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الهدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقرب وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لسف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم سلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ألهمنا علما نفقه به أوامرك ونواهيك وارزقنا فهما نعرف به كيف نجيك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم نسلك فهما النبي وحفظ المرسلين وإلهم الملائكة المقربين في عافية يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أغنى بالعلم وزينا بالحلم وأكرنا بالتقى وجملنا بالعافية يا أرحم الراحمين آمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نستودعك ما قرأناه من أقرأه في هذا المجلس وما قبله وما بعده فاحفظه علينا حتى ترده إلينا وقت حتى ترده ترده إلينا وقت احتياجنا إليه يا رحم الرحمين اللهم أكرمنا بنور الفهم وأخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وافتح لنا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا حكمتك يا رحم الرحمين آمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم يا مقاليد الأمور كله كلها بيده وإليه يرجع الأمور كلها يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم يا فتاح يا عالم افتح علينا فتحا قريبا صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقطة من لساني يفقه قولي وسد لساني وهدي قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا ورزقنا كما لفتوح العارف والفق في الدين مع كما الإخلاص السرق اليقين والعافية والغنى والنسر وحفظ النفع والانتفاء ويخيرات الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة Right. Right. Alhamdulillah And we are still at our uh, Battle of uh, Badr And last week we ended with the duels Right, because the battle, uh, you know, uh, in the past, you know, uh, with the Muslims, you know, also, you know, with other other uh, s- civilizations, and right, whenever they would go for battle, that we mentioned before, they would actually go out into a battlefield, 
right? And only those who are involved in the battle are involved in the battle, right? The civilians uh, who are not involved in the battle, they, they stay back in their own hometowns, right? And that is the way and that is the, uh, you know, the most respectable way right, by which two uh, countries, right, or two towns are at war. Right, so when they go to war, right, only those who are basically uh, fit for war right, or those who are ready for war right, are basically the ones that will fight. Right? And that only makes sense right? because you don't, you know, it is unfair to actually fight those who are not fit nor are they ready right, for fighting. Right? Rather, you know, it is more, uh, it's more dignified right? and it is more courageous actually in fact right, to only uh, have the warriors you know, fight each other and whoever is better will be the one who, have, uh, who will uh, who, who will win over right the battle right so it's, it's you know it's, it is a cowardice of our time right that that people actually uh, attack civilians right? it is a cowardice of our time it is a terrible uh, thing that has happened you know in in the modern day right whereby people uh, whereby you know governments uh, or militaries right they attack civilians who are unarmed right and un uh, unprepared right for war and that is basically it's not a fight it's not a fight it's basically a bullying. Right, it's that's all it is. That's all. That's, what, that's how you could you could actually describe it. It's a bullying, right? Because when someone has all the uh the the, the equipment, and the, you know the bombs and the planes and the and and the weaponry and 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 the 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 money, right? And then going against the people who don't have any of this, right? It's not it's not a fair fight at all. Right? There's no fight there. In fact, right? So you know, subhanallah, you know when we when we are, when you were growing up in school, right? You learn about the World War Two. Right, we learned about the you know the atrocities of the World War Two, and we also learned that the war was uh, ended, you know, or like they you know, they did the issue that, you know, that America saved you know the, the war and caused the war to end by by bombing uh, Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki in Japan, right? But what they don't uh, highlight, right, is that Hiroshima and Nagasaki are civilian towns, right? Who where Japanese people were who had nothing to do with the war, right? They were basically farmers. Right, people who are who are who are who are innocent. Right, so that should not be something to be proud of, that you actually that they actually did that. Right, whereas Japan, you know, they they attacked Pearl Harbor, which was a military base. Right, so Japan actually played it fair. You know, and I mean against the Americans, they they actually attacked a military base. And what did the Americans do? Attack civilians. I mean, it makes your hair stand. Right, that you we were thought that oh that ended the war, and you were like oh okay good thing that America did that, so the Japanese surrendered. Right, but. People till today who live there are affected. Is it fair? Is it fair that, that you know that, that, that you attack farmers somewhere in Japan who had nothing to do with the war? And they're just farming their land. <laughs> That's all they're doing. They're just farming their land. Right? And then before they knew it, all wiped out. Right? It's, 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 it's you know, on a day of judgment. It's like in the, the Quran, Allah says on a day of judgment, Allah will be so angry with the human beings. Right? The anger of Allah on the day when Allah save us. Right, the anger of Allah, because we already we feel the anger. Right? I mean, if if you just think about, it, even though we have nine hundred Japanese people, right, but you feel in your heart like, like, what did they do? Right? That that is their government, you know, or is their military that went around, you know, trying to conquer lands? Right? Not them. Right? <laughs> they just in the mountains farming land. That's all they're doing. They don't know what's. For all you know, they might be against it. You know, for all you know, they didn't like they didn't like what was going on. For all you know, right? And then they're on the receiving end. You know, so. How can you be unaware and you have to fly over the Pacific Ocean? I don't know. <laughs> Is it possible they were unaware? Was it possible? They had to fly over the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I mean they shipped their ship. I mean they were Even like shipping slower. <laughs> right. I mean I mean you would know foreign activity from a mile away. I mean from miles away. Right. I mean it wasn't like, like they they were like next door. <laughs> They had to fly over the entire Pacific Ocean. The Ameri- I mean, unless the Americans are that that uh, heedless. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, if you're a military uh, harbor, you probably will have watchouts. You're a military harbor. What? You should be having watchouts, right? So, in the case that if uh, they're aware, it's fine, but if it's underwear, and it was, it was. I mean, it was, it was a war, world war. Right. I mean, the whole the whole world was at was at war, right? So, you know, <laughs> I mean, you think about it, right? It was it was there really, and, and anyway, anyway, even if they were unaware, if they want to, uh, we're going to go into Syria, you know. <laughs> anyway, even if they were unaware, if they want to re- retaliate, where should they hit? The Japanese harbor, the, the military harbor, not civilians. Nothing would have 
you know, uh, made it okay to target. Not, nothing in this world makes it okay to target civilians. Nothing. There is no. There is no reason at all in this entire world of what the enemy might have done to you for you to target civilians. There's not a single. You can't think of a single reason that would justify targeting civilians ever. Right, ever in the history of human humanity, there would never be a reason right, that would justify targeting civilians, women, uh, children, and farmers who are working on the land. Ever. Right, but it's happening worldwide. It's happening worldwide. Right, and then when, when, when people come you know, and, and, and speak about, like, you know, uh, like in Singapore, like, you know, the drug, whoever traffics drug, they get hanged. Right, and then all oh, other countries who see, oh, that's barbaric. When you hang somebody who's a criminal, you're called barbaric, right? And then when you when when, when they go around bombing all the civilians, it's not barbaric. I mean, what kind of word is it? What kind of what kind of how do you like, I was in the Quran? How do you judge? <laughs> right? Can you the Quran? How do you judge? Can't you even think? <laughs> right? I mean, civilians, you say, oh, it's barbaric for you to to to, to for them for the laws in Singapore to to hang someone who drug trafficking destroys lives. So of course the, the 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 punishment is capital. It has to be capital punishment because it destroys society. Like, of course it's capital punishment it's on, on criminals who have been warned. Right? I mean you're warned. If you do this, you get you get you get you get hung. Khalas, it's told. Right? It's clear. Everybody in Singapore knows that. Right? I mean, and then when when you they go and and then they can say that and then they can go and you know go to you know. Countries that are Yemen, Syria, people who are just going to school, they're not doing anything. You hear all the news, the bombings are actually in hospitals and schools. Hospitals and schools. Like, why are they targeting there? Right. SubhanAllah. And sometimes, like, when you learn all these things in the Sira, and, and when, they, when, they, when they speak about the Sira, these people, and they say, oh, how barbaric the Prophet. Sallallahu what's, 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 what, what is there in here? Right. Other than you see chivalry, right, you see dignity. Right, you see fair play. Right, come out. The men and the men fight. Right? Let's see who's you know, subhanallah. Right, subhanallah, fair play. Right? Woman left out of it. Woman left out of it. Right? Children out. Right? Nobody attacks anybody else. Right, but here you will see, you know, uh, later on today we will go into the story of the of the Jews. And we're gonna to go to the first tribe that will go against the covenant. They made if, the, the peace treaty they made for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There'll be a first tribe today. Today's the story, right? And we will see. I mean, it's making my, my, my heart like shake because of the kind of like like how you know Subhanallah Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know how like how these are people of the past, right? And they were more dignified and civilized than our people. It makes us make your heart shake, right? Because because it means human beings are, are deteriorating. As, as, as a species, <laughs> right, as, as civilizations, we're getting worse. We're getting more barbaric. We're worse than animals, Allah subhanahu wa says. Right? They are worse than animals. Because animals only kill for, to, to eat. Right? Animals don't kill for no reason. Right? Unless domestic cats, you know, then they kill for no reason. But even then, right, even domestic cats, they can't help because it's the instinct. Right? So they don't, they're not cruel. They don't go around and, like, you know, uh, they don't torture. Animals don't torture. Right. Human beings, with the aqal that Allah gave them, they torture. Right. Subhanallah. You know, human beings go around you know, hunting game. Only human beings do this kind of nonsense. Right. Animals don't. Animals, you know, if, the, if a tiger is full, the zebra can walk right past the tiger. The tiger will have no interest in the zebra. The tiger only wants a zebra when he's hungry. That's all. If he's full, walk wherever you want to walk. I'm not going to kill you. Only human beings are this kind of nonsense. Right? And then it makes you, it makes you ashamed that you are one of these species. But alhamdulillah, on the other side of the human beings, they are the, they are the ones like whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises. Right? And they are the prophets and the messengers and the, and the siddiqeen, the righteous right? and, the, and the truthful. I right? mean, Allah subhanahu wa make us of those people. Right? But majority of human beings are just pathetic. And right? majority of human beings are just, you know, they're worse than animals in the way they judge. Right? Subhanallah. wa rahmatullah. Alright, so alhamdulillah, so today we're going to begin with the Battle of Badr, right? So we know that the army of the Muslims came out, right? The army of the disbelievers came out. I'm going to draw it on the board just for us to visualize. Oh, Allah, Okay, I'm going to draw it on the board. No, 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 it's not mine. <laughs> it's not my writing, can you tell? I my writing's worse. <laughs> <laughs> right, but I mean, I'll, I'll write Arabic stuff. 
on there. Okay, I'm just gonna draw the battlefield. I right, suppose have a visual. It right, helps eh, having visuals. Someone like sponsor robot uh, <laughs> duster. <laughs> yeah, no but Alhamdulillah. Or at least fix their duster. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. So this is Badr. Alright, Battle of Badr. Alright, Battle of Badr. Okay. So you mentioned actually we have another colour. Is it another colour there? Right, so I can differentiate the disbelievers and the believers. Is there another colour there? Ah red, right. So red is the disbelievers. Okay, then blue. Alright. So we mentioned that the believers of the strategies of war, right, is that they when they came to Badr, and this is the field of Badr, and the battlefield, this is right in the circle. And this is the field, right? So basically you have this thing called the battlefield, right? Right, where the battle happens. So they'll come to a plane, like of land. Like all the Muslims and the non-Muslims, this be the, the kafir, disbelievers, and they believe to come to a field and they will fight. All right. So, so the Muslims came first and they basically they chop all the wells. All right. So all the wells were on their side. They chop the wells. Right? Any wells out of their reach right, on the other side. Right. Around us, but Badr is known to be a place of wells. Right. The Muslims basically they buried the wells. Okay. So they buried the wells, destroyed the wells. Right. Why? Because when the disbelievers came, they will have no water. Right? This is basically a battle strategy. Right? That whereby you come, you deny the enemy of water. Right? So when the enemy has no water, the enemy will be weak. Right? The enemy is weakened. So when the disbelievers come, right? this is the disbelievers that came, right? the calf here. Right? Uh, when they came, right? they found no water. Right? And that, 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 that actually affected them. Right? They actually... Uh, they actually were weakened and because of lack of water. The Muslims took all the water right, and destroyed any, any remaining wells so that these believers had no water. Right? Here's, here's war. Eh? So when it comes to war, right, uh, war is war. Right? War is war. You fight. Right? So you fight and you have strategies right, by which you might win the war. All right. Then the other thing about the Muslims also right, was that... Uh, okay, so the Muslim, um, the Muslim army is here. Right? They're on this side, the disbelievers on that side. Alright, so they began, if we mentioned last week, there was there were duels, right? There was Sayyidina Ali, right, Sayyidina Hamza, right, and Sayyidina Obaida. Right, Sayyidina Obaida is Rasulullah's cousin, right, from his uh, oldest uncle. Alright, and then you have the three disbelievers on that side. Right, so of course the disbelievers here, here and here. Right? Sayyidina Ali killed his opponent straight away. Sayyidina Hamza killed his opponent straight away. Sayyidina Ubaidah was actually hit by his opponent. Right? And they actually hit each other uh, together. Right? Uh, and then he suffered injuries and he will pass away soon after the battle. Right? Soon after the battle. So that was what happened in the beginning of the battle. There was a uh, duel. As we understand that, there was a duel that was going on at the beginning of the battle. So now the battle, the battle begins. Right? So when the battle began, right, there were Arabs like Bedouins in the area, right? who like to, to watch a good show. Right? And there are those who keep poor. <laughs> I mean, you see some people coming in, and the, the enemies here, enemies here, right? So the Muslims are, what, 300 people. And the disbelievers are 1,000. Three times more. Okay, 1,000 disbelievers. Right, Kafir, 1,000. Muslims, 300. Right, much less than the disbelievers. So, of course, if this, is, this thing is happening, you know, people, people start to come, and they will sit on high land, Right, they, they they sat here, they were like mountains here. Ah, uh, so they sit on the highland to watch the show, right? It's a show, like showdown. <laughs> right. right, you are fighting. Let's watch, you know. Right, so there were people who were actually doing this, right? And I can't remember his name and things. I'll check what was his name. Right, but there was one of them, like two of them in fact, two of them. He and his friend, right? They he, he narrates that he was sitting there, and he was watching the show, lah. Right? And while they were sitting there, guess where the angels came from? It came from behind them. <laughs> so Allah sent down 3,000 angels. 
And we know that eh, Allah sent 3,000 angels And then Allah increased to 5,000 angels Right, so the so, so they say when they were sitting here And they were waiting for the battle to start You know, like, like, into, like you know, like Oh, pop, 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 eh, no <laughs> We're just sitting there and watching the battle, right? right? And then they heard the, the hooves of horses from the sky From the sky They heard the sounds of horses from the sky and they were like, where is this horse coming from? And they turned behind and they saw a, lot, a huge cloud. A huge cloud of light. Angels, eh? Angels. Huge. Right? And he could, they could hear them, you know, shouting out, Allah, Akbar, Allah, Akbar. Right? And they saw it go over their head. <laughs> like, and, and into the battlefield. So they saw one of them passed out and died on the spot. Too shocked. Died, died, died. That the whole narrative is on that lift. <laughs> and his friend passed out and died. Right, because of how of, of the, the, the sight. Right, can you imagine you're on a mountain, you want to watch a show, and you're like, what's this? <laughs> what's going on? Right, a huge army of angels on the top right, went over their head. Right, you know, like riding on horses in the air. Right, and, then, and then coming into the battlefield against the disbelievers. Right, so and he, the one that lived became Muslim, of course. You know, he, you, after you saw it, this kind of, you saw that, and you're like, I know whose side God is on. <laughs> I mean, you can tell God's on whose side. <laughs> right, so subhanAllah, you know, that's what happened. Right, so it, uh, so, so, it, uh, uh, so, so, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, he, he said, you know, uh, he actually before the battle, he took a handful of, a handful of um, sand. Right, and he threw the sand at the disbelieving army, at the kafir army. He threw the sand, right, and the sand went into the into the air, right, into the wind, right, and every person in the kafir army, right, was who would be killed, right, was afflicted in his eyes by the sand. Right? I mean, the sand would have many particles, right? He threw a handful of sand down. He threw it, right. So the sand went into the air, right, and then so everybody in that army who was going to die. Right, a small piece of the sand went into the eye, right, and that affected them the whole battle until they died. That is the eye that got sand, right? Sand entered into the eye. Right? That is, and he, when he when he did that, he will say shahitul wuju, shahitul wuju, shahitul wuju, right? and that you will actually find in Hizb uh, Bahar. If you recite Hizb Bahar after every asar, you will find there shahitul wuju, shahitul wuju, shahitul wuju. Right? May, may, the, may the faces be destroyed, 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 right? But the disbelieving armies. How did they know that the Rasulullah said that? Rasulullah said that. Right? So it's Rasulullah said that. Right? I thought once the duel is done and the It's supposed to end, nobody fought. They fought. They fought. It's basically, the duel is a, it's, it's a warning. Right? But of course, in this video, it's like, we are a thousand. You are 300. Your duel doesn't mean, don't mean anything so to us. So they went on and they went on and fought. Yeah, they went on and fought. Right? So uh, we spoke about the man who was you know, eating dates right last week. Right, and then and he was told that when Rasulullah said, you know, this is the hadith, eh? Rasulullah said that Walladi nafsi Muhammad bi yadihi la yuqatiluhum al-yawm rajulun fayuqatalu sabiran muhtasiban muqbilan ghayra mudbir illa adkhalahu Allahu al-jannah. So Rasulullah said that, you know, nobody today fights the, 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 the enemy, right? And he is firm and he is patient. Right, and he is courageous, fighting them, not running away. He is forward, not backward. And if he is killed, then this person, Allah, will place him in paradise. Right, straight away into paradise. Then this man, he was holding his dates, right? And he was like, he was like, what do you say? <laughs> Cute, this man. And so his name, his name was Ali Umar bin, Ham- bin, bin Hamam. Right, he was like, what do you say? And right, Rasul repeated his words, you know, whoever today fights, right, the disbelievers, Right, and, and he is patient and he is courageous and he is strong and he is facing them, he's not running away. Then if he and if he is killed, then he enters into paradise. And the man said, Bah, bah you know, Bah means like, you know, good news, good news. <laughs> right. You know, like how, you know, like, like in Tarim you hear you hear him say, Ya Bahtukum, Ya Bahtukum, you know, Bakht right, which means like you no, know, how lucky you are. Right. So he was like, he was like, are these dates going to stop me from paradise? Right. So he he flung his dates and he ran out into the battlefield and he, and he, and he began to fight until he was killed. Right. Until he was killed. Subhanallah. Right. So uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala right sent down the angels. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in 
uh, uh, when, 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 he, when he got the news from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he said, to, he turned to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and said, Oh Abu Bakr, good news, good news. For surely, right, here is Jibril and he is coming me with a good news. And he, and no, he is Jibril and he is uh, all ready for war. I mean, Jibril, the angel Jibril was all, you know, armed up, you know, for war, right, to, to fight in, 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 the, in the battle, right? And they say, oh, good news, oh, Abu Bakr. Or something to say, Abu Bakr. Good news, Abu Bakr. Allah has sent us his help, right? Allah has sent us his help. Here is Jibril, right? And Jibril and Mikail, and they have come down. On the other hand, right, Shaitan, right, Iblis. So Iblis, right, uh, on the side of the, of the enemy, right, he actually appeared as, in the form of a man. Right, a man from uh, from from the Najran, right? We mentioned before, eh? he's the same the same kind of man, eh? which is interesting. You know, he's from that side of the world, right? Of the peninsula, he's from that side, right? Where we see what's going on on that side right now, right? So he appeared as a form of a man from that side of the peninsula, right? And uh, and he was urging the disbelievers to go to war. He was urging the whole time. He was saying, "Go to war. You are a thousand. Confirm you will win. Confirm." Right, there are only 300. Just, and all you have to do is just kill one guy, Muhammad. You aim for the Prophet, you get him, you kill him, and you're done. Right, the Muslims will have nobody to guide them anymore. And they will, be, they, they, they will just disperse. Right, so actually, the disbelievers, all they had to do was attack one person. Right, so target one person. That's all they had to do. They didn't really have to fight the entire army. I right, just had to just target the main person, which is Rasulullah right, Which is why at, at the end of the Battle of Uhud, Right when uh, uh, Abu Sufyan came and Abu Sufyan asked, you know, the, the Muslims after they fled, and said, "Is Muhammad still alive? Right? Is Abu Bakr still alive? Is Omar still alive? I right? mean, these are the three people who are important. <laughs> right? If these three are still alive, to them they have not won anything. Right? There, there, there is no victory. Right? For them, the three main people, Rasulullah Islam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Omar. Right? If these three people are all dead." Right, then the, the, the kafir will say, oh, we have won. Right, because now Islam is destroyed. Because these three are not around. Right, but if these three are still alive, it's going to still be strong. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, Allah will protect. Allah protects his prophet. Allah protects Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Allah protects Sayyidina Omar. Right, Allah, Allah, will, Allah will do what he wants to do. Lah. You know, so nobody can force Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala against it. So shaitan, the entire time he was there, Right, and he was like telling them, you know, go and fight. You know, you're, you're, you're three times more. You, it's, it's a sure win. Right, it's you know, it's child's play. You know, it's gonna be so easy for you. It's three to one. Right, on, on the battlefield, three men to one man. Right, what is there to lose? Right. So, but Shaitan, the moment they enter into the battlefield and he saw the angels flocking in, <laughs> right, from the top of the mountain, right, he ran away and they asked him, where are you going? And he was like. He was like, I, I am not staying here because I see what you don't see. <laughs> they, didn't see. they didn't see. In fact, the people on the battlefield didn't see. It just so happened that the people who were on the mountains saw. <laughs> right? But the people who were on the battlefield, even the Muslims didn't, didn't see the angels. They couldn't see the angels. And the Muslims, they would actually narrate that they would narrate right, some of the, the Muslims that said, Ibn, Ibn Sa'ad right, uh, said that uh, he, he, he would have his sword Right? And the Muslim will run after a kafir right, to fight a kafir. And when he's about to hit the neck of the kafir, right, the head will fall off first. Without the, 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 the sword with the hitting the kafir. And they'll be like, very confused. <laughs> I was about to hit and he fell off first. <laughs> right, which means that an angel came in between and the angel did a, do- did a job. Right? And the ulama said, why is that so? Right? And it was mentioned that the angels are not allowed to strike until a Muslim raises his hand. That means they're only allowed to hit right, on behalf of a Muslim. That means they can't go and fight themselves. Right? They, they can't, they're not allowed. They're not allowed to go and do the fighting themselves. So they actually follow the Muslims around. Right? So when the Muslims raise their hand, and we mentioned there were only eight swords, 300 people fighting, only eight swords. Okay, eight swords in the army of 300. Right? So <laughs> everybody else using what? Right? They're using hands or sticks. Right, or, they, or they have uh, spears. They have spears, right? Spears, uh, arrows, bows and arrows. Right? So, so it's basically their stick. Lah. Right? Here we have the story of Ukasha. Right? Sayyidina Ukasha, he was one of those eight who had a sword. And right? he has an old sword. Right? So there are eight swords, and one of the swords very old. <laughs> like old, rusty sword. Right? So when he was fighting, right, his old sword broke. 
And so he was fighting very, you know, uh, gallantly, and, and the sword, you know, it broke into half. And he went, Ya Rasulullah, and my sword broke. <laughs> he said, I can't use the sword, it broke. And Rasulullah SAW said, you know, he took a branch from a tree, he broke the branch, and he said, take this. I said, a branch, right? Well, of course, he said, Ukasha, he had no doubt. He took the branch from Rasulullah SAW, and we fully believe that he can fight with a branch. Right, you know, the branch of the tree. Right, and of course, with the miracle of Rasulullah SAW, and also due to the obedience of Sayyidina Ukasha, the branch transformed into a sword. It actually transformed. Right, it transformed into a sword. This is like not, not fairy tales, right? it's real. Like, you, know, you know, like Harry Potter, all color. Eh? <laughs> like, you know, all of it, like, like, all this fantasy, all they lose out on what actually happened at the time of Rasulullah SAW. Right, the branch turned into a sword, right, and he went and he fought. Right, and, and, for, and thereafter, he will always have that sword. With him when he goes out into battle, like, because it's from the uh, miracles of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So of course, Shaitan at this point, right? <laughs> at this point, when he saw the angels come in, he ran off, right? He said, "You, you, you, you are on your own. Right? You guys are all on your own. I see what you don't see. I am afraid of Allah." <laughs> right? So Shaitan is afraid of Allah, and right? he ran off. Iblis, he ran off. He abandoned the disbelievers, the, the kafir. He abandoned them. He ran away. Right, and then uh, so so the angels are, so the angels they follow the Muslims around, and the, and the Sahaba they said that we used to know you know after the Battle of Badr we knew who was hit by the Muslims by by, by who was uh, killed by a, by a human being, and who was killed by uh, an angel by seeing where are the marks, right? Because the angels marks are different from human marks, <laughs> right? The angel swords leave different marks. <laughs> Right, so they will see that if somebody's you know uh, head, right, had uh, like black, black spots, like a black line on the neck here, right, and then on their fingers, right, that means this person was killed by an angel, right. So and, and, also, and of course, okay, you ask the question, how come the angels are not allowed to fight themselves? It means the angels are only allowed to follow Muslims, right, and when the Muslim tries to fight, the angel will help. Right, but they're not allowed to go and fight themselves. You see, eh, there, is a th- there are a thousand disbelievers, 300 Muslims, 3,000 angels. <laughs> right, that's way more than the, than the disbelievers. And in fact, in the Quran, it says 3,000 and Allah make more 5,000 angels. And angels cannot die. Right? You cannot kill an angel. <laughs> right? So you have 5,000 army angels. You can't see them. <laughs> they're everywhere. Of course you should win, right? Right, but the law is they 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 are all there, but they are not allowed to fight without a believer next to them. I mean, they must follow the Muslims around, and the Muslims raise their hand to kill the disbelievers. Then the angel will come and he can kill. Right, but if nobody raises their hand, the angel can't do anything. He has to sit there, right, and he can't. He's not allowed to kill. And he can only kill if a Muslim is already about to kill. Right, then the angel will kill. Right, so the, the ulama asks, you know, why? Why is it so? Right. The reason is because right, if the angels went around killing everybody, right, there'd be no reward for the believers. There's no reward. Right? No reward whatsoever. Why are they doing that? <laughs> the, the, the angels are doing all the job. <laughs> the Muslims are like, no. <laughs> like three or three hundred of us came out. The angels doing everything. <laughs> Good. Like, I mean, like, like, you will be like, what, what are we here for? <laughs> no. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah wants to honor the believers. And Allah wants to reward. Right? So of course, Allah, if Allah wants to, Allah can send one angel, give a shout. Right? Like in Surah Yasin, Allah says, the angel came, give a shout, everyone died. Angels could do that. They could just give a very loud shout. And because the shout is so loud that human beings, they die. Because the, the, the loudness of the shout of the angels. If Allah could, Allah could just... <laughs> right? And all the, the disbelievers died. If Allah could. If Allah wanted to. Of course Allah could. If Allah wanted to, He could do it. Right? But He didn't do it. Right? Allah sent 5,000. Even the 5,000 have rules on them. Right? You're not allowed to kill anybody until the believers put in effort. When they put in effort, then you can help. If they don't put in effort, you cannot help. Right? The angels are given very strict instructions. Right? So Alhamdulillah. So of course... And the believers, they were, they, they, were, they were also wondering what's going on. Because they didn't know the angels were there. And so they would say, we will run after this believer about to hit him. And his head would fall off of his, of his, of his shoulders. You know, it would just fall off. So did they didn't know the angels would be there from the beginning? They didn't know. But then the Rasulullah said that 
Oh, itu Sayyidina Abu Bakar. Oh, right before the battle, yeah. So the Muslims went to battle not oh, knowing that angels are going to come. Oh. You see? So Allah, because Allah wants to test them. Will you trust Allah? Hmm. Will you trust the Prophet? Will you go and fight knowing that they are three times more than you and you are 300, they are 1,000? Will you go and fight? Are you going to be brave enough? Right? Or will you run away? Right? So they went not knowing the angels will come. Then Allah sent the angels. Like that, all believers, Muslims are like that. Right? You do what Allah says to do. Allah says, do this, you go and do. Right? You don't say, how? I don't know. I cannot. I, can't, I don't know, you know, where will, you know, where will this come from? I'm, I'm too weak. I'm, too, I'm not able to. I cannot. You know, I'm, like, I, 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 I am I'm, 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 I'm unable. So Allah says, no, you just do. You do and you do'a. Now you do'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send His help. And Allah will send help to you and you can do more than what you ever thought possible. And that is when you trust Allah and you say, Ya Allah, and no matter what you are in, help me. And you can do all kinds of things in life. It's a better battle. battle. It's, 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 a, it's a very good, strong lesson for us. Subhanallah, very strong lesson. Right, for us to learn that the Muslims didn't give up. Right, they went and then Allah sent His help. Right, Allah sent His help from the, uh, from the heavens. Right? No, from not anywhere, from the heavens. Right, so, uh, and among, okay, so you see, among the Meccans, right, there were people who did not want to go out and fight. For example, the uncle of Rasulullah SAW, Sayyidina, Sayyidina Abbas. Right? Uh, so Rasulullah SAW, he actually, before the battle, he actually uh, uh, called the Sahabas and he said to them, right, these people, right, you, you, do not, you don't uh, fight them. Right? And one of them was Sayyidina Ibn Abbas. It's Sayyidina Abbas. Sayyidina Abbas, the uncle of Rasulullah it was said that he was actually a Muslim in secret. He was a secret Muslim. Right? And he, was, he kept his Islam secret right, so that the, uh, he can be a spy. For Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it's, it's a war. Eh? We're all in war. So don't think that how can he be a spy? Eh? We're all in war. This is war, right? So war, you have spies. Right? <laughs> right. So Sayyidina Ibn Abbas was the one. Sayyidina Abbas was the one that sent, uh, that who actually sent uh, the the news to Rasulullah on what the deceivers were doing. So of course after the so the battle, uh, the battle carried on, right? And it finished very quickly. Where this video was giving up. Right, uh, and they were fleeing. So the the Muslims, you know, they would actually capture the disbelievers. Right, they would take them as prisoners of war. Right, prisoners of war are captured and not killed. Right, because they actually uh, there's benefit in prisoners of war. Right, so it, uh, Umayyah bin Khalaf, right, Umayyah bin Khalaf was the master of Bilal. Right, he was the one that owned Bilal. He was that he was the guy right who actually put Bilal on the hot sand. And put a rock on uh, Sayyidina Bilal's uh, chest. Right? That was the guy, right? Umayyah bin Khalaf. Right? So one of the Sahaba, he actually caught uh, Umayyah bin Khalaf. And he was you know, carry, hold, pulling him along you know, to be ransom. You see, when you go and fight and you catch the enemy, right? You catch the enemy soldiers. Now they are your prisoner. And when they are a prisoner, their family must send money to you to ransom them. Right? Pay for them so you send them back. Right? So it's a, it's, a, it's a form of income. Right, it's a form of money right, coming in. It's all, it's all war. It's all war. You know, war is all fair right, in, in war. <laughs> right. So I guess we have to remind ourselves that it's all war. Right? Don't think, think that, you know, how could they do that? It's war. <laughs> it is all war. You know, it is the loss of war. Right? War, war is a different, you know, different engagement altogether. Right? So uh, one of the Sahaba was, you know, he caught Umayyad bin Khalaf. And, and actually, in fact, Umayyad bin Khalaf, he was so scared. Right? He was just a scary cat. Eh? He was so scared to be killed. He actually surrendered himself to one of the Sahaba. He surrendered himself. He didn't want to be killed, right? So he went there, he surrendered himself. And he said, Look, can you take me as your prisoner? <laughs> My family will ransom me with a lot of money, okay? So please take me as your prisoner. And don't let the Muslims, don't let the Muslims kill me. Right? So he got so scared. It's Umayyad bin Khalaf. So the Sahaba was like, yeah, this guy is good money. And this guy, because Umayyad bin Khalaf was rich. I said, you can really ask for money, right, for him. So he took him as a prisoner, and Bilal, he walked past Sayyidina Bilal, and Sayyidina Bilal saw, and he was like, that is Umayyad bin Khalaf. All right, and the Sahaba, yeah, and he's my prisoner. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't kill him. He's, you know, he's money for me. Right? And then uh, Sayyidina Bilal said, you know, no, it's Umayyad bin Khalaf. 
Umar bin Khalaf, the you know the 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 the, the, the evil man, the the, the the they call the Shaitan of the Quraysh. Right? He's an evil man, Umar bin Khalaf. And Bilal was like, you know, I will not be, I will not rest until I kill him myself. Right? So Bilal went up, you know, and he fought, you know, with the Sahaba. Sahaba was like, okay, take your man, <laughs> right? and he killed uh, Umar bin Khalaf. Bilal said, so Bilal actually kills uh, Umar bin Khalaf, and then the Sahaba, I can't remember his name right now, right? but the Sahaba said, you know, oh Bilal. You know, you cost me so much money. <laughs> you know, he was a he was a, you know, a gold mine. This guy, <laughs> but you know, you had to do what you had to do. You had to kill him. <laughs> right, so Subhanallah. Uh, yeah. Right. So um, we finish the story of Abu Jahal. So how Abu Jahal was killed, right? Right. Uh, okay. In this battle, the big big kafir were killed. There's so many of them. The big names. Right, so many of the big, disgusting, you know, uh, terrible kuffar, the kafir, right, so many of them were killed in this battle, wiped out in this battle. We know about Abu Lahab. Abu Lahab, the uncle of Rasulullah SAW, was too cowardly to leave Makkah. He was too scared. He was scared of his sister's dream. You remember her dream whereby the man came and drew the, threw the rock, right, and there was a rock that entered into everybody's house. That was a dream, right? right so, so he was too scared of that dream. Right, so he actually sent, he paid someone to go out and fight on his behalf. He actually paid someone. Right, but, you know, Allah did not allow him to, be, to escape, right? And in fact, he got afflicted by a disease. I mentioned about his story, yeah? He, in, I think Surah Lahab mentioned about his story. Right, whereby he got afflicted by a skin disease. Right, and the skin disease made his skin rot on the outside. Right, and he was so smelly. He was rotting when he was alive. And he was walking around and he was his stench. And he was really reeking of this, you know, terrible, you know, smell. From far, they could smell him. Eventually, they, 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 they told him to get out of the, of the city, to go into the valleys. Because he was so disgusting, Abu Lahab. You know, Allah sent a disease to him. Right? Because uh, Abu Lahab, he used to go around, you know, boasting about his looks. He was very good looking, Abu Lahab. He used to go around and boast, you know, how handsome he is. You know, how good, how nice his skin is. And he used to have good skin, I know. So he's called Abulab because he used to have a reddish flare to his cheeks, like, like, like a natural blusher like, on his cheeks. So he was seen as someone very good looking right, in, amongst the Arabs. So, and he used to go around, you know, and Allah says, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab wa tab. And Allah says, you know, destroy it at the hands of Abu Lahab. And he would say, my hands are fine. Like, he would talk against the Quran. He'd say, my hands are fine, my hands are not destroyed. Look, and he would go in front of Rasulullah and say, look, see, my hands are fine. Right, and he was, you know, he was, he was boastful of, of, of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Allah sent a disease to him, right, and he was completely, you know, he would eat up his his his, his skin into his bones, and he was like with worms and whatever rotting, right. So eventually he died, right. But he died when he died, he was such he had such a strong pungent odor, a right? stench that was that was you know coming out of him. Nobody wanted to go near him, right, because his body his body was rotting there. And right? nobody wanted to go and bury him. Right? Because he was it was disgusting. Eventually his sons came with a long stick. Right? And they used the stick to poke his body right? and to push him, roll him into a ditch. Right? And then they covered it. Because the smell was terrible. And the smell was terrible. They couldn't tahan the smell. Right? So, so Abu Lahab, even though he tried to escape death by not going out right, to fight in Badr, he was afflicted by a disease. Right, you know, so, so all of the big enemies of Rasulullah all of them wiped out. Wiped out. Right, so subhanAllah. Of the people who went to fight in Badr was the son-in-law of Rasulullah The son-in-law. Who is he? Right, he is... Uh, he is uh, the, the, the husband of Zainab, of Saitina Zainab. Saitina Zainab is the daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. At that point, uh, because it's still early in Islam, at that point, a Muslim woman can still be married to a non-Muslim man. Uh, because she married him before Islam. Uh, she did marry before Islam. So when Islam came, she of course automatically became Muslim. She believed in her father, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Sayyidina Zainab, she believed in her father straight away. She has no doubt that he is a prophet, right? Her husband, 
Her husband, who is uh, Abu Al-As, right, he is the nephew of Sayyidina Khadija. So he is her cousin from her mother's side. Right, Sayyidina Khadija's side, right, her nephew, is she, he married his own cousin. Right? So he is the uh, husband of Sayyidina Zainab. He loved her very much. Right? Their story is an amazing story. He loved her very much. Right? And when Rasul became a prophet, وسلم, he was raised to be a prophet, وسلم, the disbelievers, when, you know, Abu Jahal, eh, story Abu Jahal, he went around and he tried to disgrace the family of Rasulullah. So uh, his two daughters, Um Kalthum and Sayyidina Ruqayya, Rasul has four daughters, eh? So his four daughters, Sayyidina Fatima Zahra, right? Sayyidina Um Kalthum, Sayyidina Ruqayya, Sayyidina Zainab. Right? Sayyidina Ruqayya and Sayyidina Um Kalthum were married to the sons of Abu Lahab. Right? They were married, but they were not living together. Right? They were just married right? because they were too young right? to actually live with the sons of Abu Lahab. Right? Uh, Abu Jahal said to Abu Lahab, get your sons to divorce them, to disgrace the family of, of Muhammad, of Rasulullah SAW. So of course the sons of Abu, Jahal, of Abu Lahab, you know, they, 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 they did it. Right, to uh, to please their father, then they went to uh, Abu Az bin Rabi'ah, right, who is the, the husband of Zainab, and said to him, you know, you ask to us whatever you want, what money you want, what woman you want, whatever you want, we will give it to you for as long as you divorce Zainab, right, divorce Zainab, right, so as to bring shame to the family of Muhammad of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, Zainab Abu Az bin Rabi'ah said no, never. I will never divorce Zainab. Right? And they say, we will give you whatever you want. What do you want? You want money? We will give it to you. Right? You want a woman? Oh, we can choose any woman out there to marry you to her. Just divorce Zainab. Right? And he said, no, I, will, I can never replace Zainab. Nobody can replace Zainab. So he refused to, 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 to you know, uh, accede to their request. Right? So, but he went out to fight in Badr. He actually went out to fight. His wife was still in Mecca. So Abu Al-As bin Rabi was captured in Badr. He was actually captured right, by the Muslims and brought into Medina. So now the news reached the daughter of Rasulullah right, Sayyidina Zainab that her husband has been captured by the Muslims. She is Muslim, right, but her husband is not Muslim. Right, so, and he has been captured by the Muslims. He is now a, a, a prisoner right, with the Muslims. I don't think when, it, when we say prisoner, that they're all in prisons. They're not in prisons. They're, just, they're all kept in a room in Medina, right? And uh, they are, in fact, treated very well. Right? Rasulullah commanded the Muslims to treat the prisoners well. They were given good food, right? And whereas the Muslims themselves were having lesser food than the, the, the prisoners. So they would give the prisoners nice bread, nice food, while the Muslims would eat very dry dates, dry bread. You know, you will see, you know this is recorded in, in, in Islam. So the Muslims who, who captured the, 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 the disbelievers, they ate less food right, and worse food than their own prisoners. So that's how you know, the Muslims are. They give their prisoners better than what they have. Right, so, so, so Abu Asr bin Rabi was, in amongst, was with the Muslims, right? Uh, and he was a prisoner. Zainab, Zainab, so whenever you have a family member who is a prisoner, you must send money to try and ransom, to try and bail him out, right, to get, get him back. So Zainab, Zainab right, she had no money with her. Right, she was not uh, wealthy. Right, but all she had was a necklace right, that was given to her on her wedding day that belonged to her mother, Zainab Khadija. And Zainab Khadija had given her a necklace on her wedding day. Right? And that was the only wealth that she had. That was the only valuable that she had, the necklace. Right? So she took out her necklace and she sent it as a ransom right, to Medina right, to ransom her husband back. And of course, when the necklace reached the hands of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw the necklace and he knew immediately whose necklace it was. He knew it. Right? Because he's seen the necklace so many times. He knew whose necklace it was. He knew it was a necklace of his wife, Sayyidina Khadija, who at that point had already passed away for the, uh, three, five years ago. At that point, it was five years ago eh? she had passed away. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw the necklace, like he began he, all the memories of Khadija, like all the memories of his wife who had passed away, all of it came flooding back to him. Like all of it is by seeing the necklace from Sayyidina Zainab. Like, and he, like, he was overwhelmed with emotion that he saw his, you know, his wife's belonging uh, in front of him. 
and the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you know, and and he and the Zaha and here the narrator say that he began to cry and cry and cry and cry right? because of you know like all the emotions that coming out again, like all the emotions you know pouring out of his heart right, for his uh, beloved wife, right? That he that he that he really really missed right, at that point. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned to the Sahaba and said that Zainab, my daughter, has sent her valuable. Right, to ransom her husband. And the Sahaba saw how he was affected. They saw how he was crying, how he was affected, how he was... Like, he, he was so, you know, deeply uh, moved, right, by seeing the necklace of Sayyidina Khadija in front of him. And he said to them, if you would like, then give her back her husband. Right, when my daughter, she wants her husband back, give her back her husband. And if you would like, Give her back her necklace also. <laughs> right. Give her back. Don't take her back her necklace. Give her back her husband. Give her back her necklace. Right. And of course, the, the Sahaba said, you know, Labbaik ya Rasulullah. Of course, ya Rasulullah. We will give back, you know, your son-in-law to your, to, your, to your daughter and we'll give back the necklace. Right. So, subhanAllah. There were people among the prisoners whose family did not have enough money right, to actually ransom them out. So here, Rasulullah Sallam asked the Sahaba, what should they do? With these prisoners, right? And all these believers, right? Sayyidina Umar said, kill them. Right? Sayyidina Umar. They kill them all. They're all these believers. Kill them all. They're all prisoners. Kill them. Right? Uh, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr said, no, Ya Rasulullah. Don't kill them. Right? But ask them if they know how to read and write. Right? And say, whosoever knows how to read and write, then if he's able to teach five Muslim children, to read and write, that is his freedom. And that means he can, he can bail himself out by teaching. Right? So from there, right, children amongst the Muslims began to be educated on how to read and write. Right? But of course, later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, revealed the verse saying that it is not becoming of a prophet right, uh, to do this. Right? Actually, Allah was on fa- in favor of Sayyidina Umar's suggestion. Right? That actually, should actually just uh, eliminate them. Right, but Allah Alam, you know, that Allah allowed it. Right, Allah didn't send the verse and after it happened, then he revealed the verse. Right, then you know it was said that it's not becoming for a prophet to actually keep uh, prisoners, he should actually eliminate the prisoners. Right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send the hukum lah. Right, but it only came after that. Right, they after that. Released. Yeah, they were already released by then. Alright. So that is the uh Sayyidina Muhammad uh so that is the story of, of the Battle of Badr, right? Okay. Let me just see if I missed out anything. Eh? Okay, alright. So after the Battle of, of Badr, what happened? The news now reached Mecca. Oh, terrible, terrible news, right? Reach Mecca. Right. It reached Mecca now. Terrible news. The disbelievers lost. They lost the battle. And not only did the disbelievers lost, the kafir lost, right, was that the main people, the big strong people of the kafir, all of them have been killed. They're all gone. Right? So there's no one left. <laughs> right? All the big names, the big kafir, all killed at this point. There's no one left. The news reached, reached Mecca. You know, that, that Mecca has been destroyed. The big disbelievers have been uh, killed off. Who uh, was uh, Abu Jahal, Umar bin Khalaf, uh, uh, and, uh, Walid bin Mughira. Uh, they were big, big. Abu Sufyan is one of them. Abu Sufyan is of, uh, he's, he's, he's younger. And he was not there. Remember? He was not there. He, he was with the caravans. Right, so he came back to Mecca. So he actually was not there. Which, which is why thereafter he became more of like sort of the leader of Mecca. Right, but he was, he was like an, uh, he was not a willing leader. <laughs> right, which is why he kept giving in. Because right, he was like, it's not like Abu Jahal. Abu Jahal wants to fight. Right, so so you know, once this, this battle finished, the main people are all gone. The main people in Mecca who tortured the Muslims for 13 years in Mecca, those people, all gone. All of them. All of them killed off in uh, the Battle of Badr, right? They were, they were all killed off, right? Uh, so, okay, this, so what happened was that, you know, uh, there was once a story, eh? Right? There was once whereby uh, okay, two men, right? Omer 
bin Masina Muhammad uh, Umar bin Wahab Al-Jumhi and Safwan bin Umayyah right there were two men who were sitting by themselves near the Kaaba right? in a small room right it was after Badr they were sitting by themselves and they were saying they were they were they were just you know, lamenting about what happened I was like, oh, terrible, we have been destroyed, the Muslims won, we all lost, and how many of our people have died, and what kind of life is it now in Mecca, nobody's around, everyone's dead, <laughs> right, you know, there's a way left in Mecca for us to be around, we want to hang out with anymore, right, you know, Abu Jahal, Muhammad bin Khalaf, you know, the, the, you know, Walid bin Mughira, you know, all these people, all, they all died. So they were all this talking about it, like they're talking about how terrible it is now in Mecca. There's nothing else to live for in Mecca. And one of them, Umair, Umair bin uh, Wahab bin, said that you know I even have a son who is one of the one of the uh, prisoners with the Muslims. This is such a terrible life that we are at now, you know, in Mecca. It's a terrible, terrible life. You know, it's a terrible aftermath of, of the of the battle. So Umair bin Wahab bin he said, you know, so fun. If not for my debts that I have, he has a lot of debt, right? Money, debt, and my children that I fear for. You know, he still has young children that he's looking after for. I would right now take my sword, march to Medina, and kill Muhammad. So I would just take my sword right now. Right? That means if I didn't have anything to worry about in my because of my death, you know, I would just go. Right, to Muhammad in Medina and kill him and finish the matter. So Safwan said to him, it's a good idea. So he said, tell you what, I will pay off your debts for you and I will look after your children for you. You go and do what you have to do. And so Omar said, are you serious? He said, yeah, I'm serious. You keep it. And then uh, Omar said, keep it between us. Don't tell anybody about this because it's going to be, you know, murder. He's going to, going to assassinate Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Keep it between us. You know, I'm just going to go there. I'm going to pretend that I'm there to seek my, to 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 buy, bail back my my son who is one of their prisoners, right? So I'm going to pretend, but I'm going to kill Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So okay, right? Between us, no one else knows about it. So remember, it was in Mecca, near the Kaaba, in a small room. Right, so they they were only talking. The two of them only know about it. Right, so Omar to his sword, right, and he marched to Medina. When he entered the Medina, right, Sayyidina Omar saw him. Right, Sayyidina Omar grabbed him and said, "What are you doing here, O enemy of Allah?" Right, and Sayyidina Omar said, "What are you doing here, O enemy of Allah?" And he said, like, "Omar, is it how you treat people? <laughs> is it how you treat people?" Say, Omar, I'm here to bail my son out. You have my son. I need to speak to Muhammad. Let me speak to him. Then Rasulullah Omar said, Ya Rasulullah, the enemy of Allah, Omar bin Wahab, is here. And he's called the enemy of Allah because he was one of those people who used to torture the Muslims. Eh? I see one of those, you know, it was terrible, lah, he, this guy. So Rasulullah said, Let him come in. Let him come in. Right. So he came and he sat in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his sword still in his, uh, with him like holding his sword, and all the Sahaba were watching. What is this man up to? Right? Because you see, yeah, even if he was to, if he's sitting right in front of Rasulullah Sallam, all he has to do is just do one swipe, right, and kill the Prophet. And even after that, if the Sahaba come and try to kill him, no problem. He's one man, right? The Prophet is the Prophet. You kill the prophet, you destroy the Muslim community. Right? He is a he, The prophet is an important man, right? This Omer, he's just a man. He's not anybody else. So if the, if the Sahaba, so if he kills the prophet, the damage that he will do, right, is so great, right, a damage that if they try to kill him back, they can't get back what he 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 destroyed, right? They can't fix it. Right, because the prophet is the prophet of the You need the prophet there to guide you. Right, you can't, you know, you, you can't lose him at this point. Right, of course, Allah knows best. Right, so, so, so he said in front of Rasulullah and then uh, Rasulullah said, you know, so he said, uh, so he said, 
Rasulullah said to him, "Come near." So he came near to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He saw, it. like, and he and the, and the man said, you know, uh, good morning, in Arabic, you know, "Anna uh, amu sabahan," you know, good morning. Uh, and Rasulullah responded saying that for surely Allah has ennobled us with a better greeting, O oh, Umair. Right? Allah has taught us to say Assalamu Alaikum. So, Assalamu Alaikum is an Islamic greeting. Right? There was once this somebody, I don't know, one of the ministers, not our ministers, how they're so afraid of the Arabization. Right? And, and I heard one of them you know, say that why are we saying Assalamu Alaikum? Would you say Selamat Bagi? And I'm like, Selamat. <laughs> She just wonder. Oh no! Yeah, this is the thing. You know, you know, if you know your sira, if you know your sira, the Arabs used to say good morning to each other. They used to. Islam came and said, "Don't say good morning. Say assalamu alaikum." Right? You're Muslim. I say assalamu alaikum. I don't say good morning. Right? So they even have a good morning in Arabic. You know. So and and as Muslims, we say assalamu alaikum. You don't go around saying assalamu alaikum. You know, I'm not even Malay, I'm Indian. Right, so I don't... <laughs> you know, sometimes they, they go overboard, sometimes, you know, and then they say things that... Like, and they say, don't say Assalamu Alaikum, say Assalamu Alaikum. If you say Assalamu Alaikum, you get reward. Assalamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, you get 30 times a reward. Assalamu Alaikum 10 times. Wa rahmatullahi 20 times. Wa barakatuh 30 times. Why not? And one who replies... Wa alaikum salam, 10. Wa rahmatullahi, 20. Wa barakatuh, 30. If you say salam lagi, you get nothing. So Allah wa'ala, you know Allah knows best. You know Allah knows best. Right? I'm not saying don't. You can say salam alaikum salam lagi. Right? If you want to preserve your Malay culture, right? I mean, if you're Malay. Right? <laughs> I should go and learn my, my Hindi language. I, mean, I have no clue about it. <laughs> I've lost my, my culture completely. <laughs> Uh, Indians, and you are Indians. <laughs> right, so and he said that, and said that, you know, Allah has, uh, has ennobled us with something that is better. Right, or Omer, with salams, you know, which is, and salam, say assalamu alaikum, that is the greeting of the people of paradise. And so he says, assalamu alaikum, you intend to imitate the people of paradise, right? And so Rasulullah said, what, why are you here, Omer? Why do you come here? And then he said, I came here to bail out my son. Okay, you all took my son as prisoner, now I want to build him out. And Rasulullah said, then why do you come with a sword? What's with the sword next to you? You know, in your, in your uh, pouch. And then the... the, the and it, oh, this Umair was like, oh. <laughs> this Umair was like, oh. And then the sword like, oh, may Allah destroy these swords. <laughs> They've only brought evil to us. <laughs> yeah. Such a response. Then <laughs> he come like, what do you want? Oh, I want to drop my son. Oh, you got a sword? Oh, look at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, la, 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 la. terrible sword. We all will destroy all swords. See what they brought us. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very funny sight. <laughs> you know, like they are playing games. And then, uh, and then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, tell me the truth. Why do you come? To Omer. Why do you come? Tell me the truth. And Omer said, as I say, you know, my son, you all got my son. I want to get my son back. Then Rasulullah SAW said, Rather, you sat with Safwan in front of the Kaaba. And you said to him, If not for your debt and your children. And he said exactly what he said, word for word. He quoted him exactly. And you said to him, if not for your children and your debt, you would have gone straight to, Mecca, to to Medina and killed Muhammad. Right? And killed Muhammad. And Safwan said that he will handle your debt and your children. And that's why you have come here now. And that was only between you and Safwan. And no one else knew about this. Right? And then, uh, you know, Omar said, Ashadu Allah ilaha. Ashadu anna ka Rasulullah. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna ka Rasulullah. And so, so Omar is like, well, who else would know? How did he know? Right? In Mecca, his secret conversation with Safwan. And he knew that nobody knows. Nobody knows about that, about the plot. Nobody knew he was going to come to kill Rasulullah. Nobody knew. Right? Who, who would have 
taken that 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 whisper that they had at Kaaba and brought it all the way to Medina and told Rasulullah before he came. You know who could have done that? You know, so of course he was like, and when that happened, he just at that moment, you know, I should do Allah ilaha illallah, I should do Anna ka Rasulullah, and I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and that you are the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, and then he says, Yes, ya Rasulullah, right? Yes, he said, Kunna ya Rasulullah, right? For sure, ya Rasulullah, I was lying to you, and for surely I came. To do as, exactly as you said, <laughs> I came just to kill you, and and, and you know, and, and and who 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 else could have told you about our plan except Allah? Only Allah knew of our plan, and nobody else could tell you about about what we we discussed. So he says, you know, this is definitely wahyu. It's definitely a message from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. No one could have come before before me. And for this, for, for sure, you see, this, 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 this discussion that I have was only me and Safwan. Nobody else was there. Just me and Safwan. And Safwan would not tell anyone because he wants you dead. Right? So, so, you know, this, so this, for sure, you are on the truth. You are truly a prophet. Right? And he took his, uh, uh, he took his uh, shahada. Right? And then, meanwhile, right, <laughs> Safwan in Mecca. So Safwan doesn't know what's going on, right? Now this guy has now become Muslim already. So Safwan is in Mecca, right? So Safwan, he's been going around saying to everyone, "Oh, good news, good news, something's gonna come." He's saying thing. He's saying he always waiting. He's saying, good news, good news, right? It's gonna be good news coming our way after Badr. Any the Arabic goes Abshiru. بِوَقَعَةِ تَأْتِيكُمْ الْآنِ فِي أَيَّامِ تَنْسِيكُمْ وَقَعَةِ تَنْسِيكُمْ وَقَعَةِ الْبَدْرِ Right, you know, good news about there's going to be something that will happen soon. Right, they will make you forget the calamity that happened at Badr. Okay, something's going to happen very soon. <laughs> so anybody who came back from, from travels, you will ask them, you know, do you see Omer? Do you see Omer? Any news? Any news? Any news about Muhammad? <laughs> and eventually, the news reached him that, you know, when he asked, you see Ahmed? Because he was wondering what's going on. Is he, is he dead yet? Right. And then uh, the news came to him that, oh, uh, someone, someone, someone told him, Omer, Omer became Muslim. <laughs> and the news came to him, Omer, we said, Omer became Muslim. So he swore never to talk to Omer ever again. Because he became Muslim. Thereafter, Omer came back. After spending some time in Medina, he came back to Mecca. Right, as in Omar, he said in Omar, he said the Sahaba, and he was one of the strongest da'is in Mecca. Omar, Omar, he came back to Mecca as a Muslim, and he spread Islam. He really spread Islam amongst the Meccans, and so many people in Mecca became Muslim. And this is the plan of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You see what just happened before for thirteen years or something in Mecca, very few became Muslim, very few. Right, less than a hundred became Muslim. Right, this is very few for for thirteen years of hard, you know, that one work. After Badr, you see what happens. After Badr, now people of Mecca, their main people who has you know, enemies in Rasulullah are all dead. You see that? So that means the main barrier down. Right, Muslims just won a battle in which angels fought. <laughs> right, so so they have nobody now in Mecca. Is quiet now. It's very lonely in Mecca. It's just everybody. <laughs> it's all quiet in Mecca now. So what is needed at this point? Da'wah. You just need a small nudge. Someone to nudge you. And you enter into Islam. So now everybody's like, your hearts are sore. Right? The disbelievers lost. You lost all your main people. The Muslims won. Now, and now the heart is... You know, when, when you lost everything, right, you begin to like, you know... Okay la, you're right. You know you're right. They are right. <laughs> they, they are on the truth. So there's need to be a, a small nudge, right? and of course after you hear the story of uh, Sayyidina Omar, even a stronger nudge. So when he came back, he was the strongest dai. So is it Allah's way? Where Allah Subhanahu took one of them, made him Muslim, sent him back, and now da'wah. because now the door is open in many people's hearts. Their hearts are all open. It is the best time for da'wah. Do your da'wah. Right? So Allah Subhanahu said. Huh? Later one, Safwan, not Sufyan, Safwan.
right? Uh, later on, he became Muslim. So many people enter into Islam on the hands of Omer, right? Okay, so the battle of Badr is done, right? Now, is, yes. Is it someone that is persecuted with Aisha, the one that is? Um, oh no 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 no, no different. Mm. The Safwan that was you say now Aisha did a scandal. Right, the, 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 not a scandal, but it was a, uh, the fitna. That one was a different Safwan altogether. You know, same Safwan. This Safwan is an old Safwan. <laughs> that one was a young man. Right, so, okay. So now, Rasulullah went back to Medina. Right. He meets with sad news. And what is the sad news? Sayyidina Ruqayya has passed away. Do you remember Sayyidina Ruqayya? Right, she was very sick. She was very sick at the point of Battle of Badr. Sayyidina Uthman was not part of the battle because he was, in, he was instructed by Rasul Islam to stay with his wife right, and to look after her. Right? So while they were away on the battle, Sayyidina Ruqayya had passed away. Right? So, so, uh, and had been buried. Right? So Rasul came back to the news that his daughter has passed away. Right? So after the triumph of, of Badr, right, came the uh, sadness, right? That he lost his first daughter. She was the first one to go, eh? Right? So, he has, you know, seven children, right? Uh, three are boys, four are girls, right? All three boys would die when they are small. Right? So, all of them died when they're two years old, around there, one year old, two year old, all die. So, the boys didn't live very long. The girls, the first one to die is Saitina Rukaya. She's the first one to go, very young, in her 20s. Right, she's in the, they all they all die in their twenties around there twenties or around there. Right. She's not the first daughter. She's the first one to die. Yeah, but Zainab was the first daughter. She would die first. After several years, Zainab would die. Out of a disease also, she would fall sick and she would die. Right. Then after a few more years, Zainab Um Kalsum also would fall sick and die. Right. So the only one that lived to see Rasulullah pass away was Zainab Fatima. Sayyidina Fatima is the only one who saw her father pass away. Everybody else died before him. Right? So already as a parent, to have one child pass away before you, right, that is difficult. Right? To have six children, six and also some six and three as children and three and three as adults. Right? To pass away and he will bury them. Right? He himself, when Sayyidina Ibrahim, his more younger son, right, his younger son Sayyidina Ibrahim passed away, he was only two years old. There was some who carried a boy to the graveyard and he would bury the boy and he began to cry to the point his tears was falling onto the uh, sand and he was making the sand like you know smooth and everything right? and the sahaba said what is it ya Rasulullah are you crying are you crying you know for the dunya you know you lost a uh, son and this is, this is Allah's rahma, Allah's mercy on us tears right? what comes from your eyes you're not going to be asked about but what you say with your mouth right? that one can be wrong Right, but what you say, do with your eyes, it's okay. Right, you can cry. If it's sad, you can cry. And this is just his, this is just his children, his grandchildren. He also had death of grandchildren. Right, so Sayyidina Zainab had a child who also died in the hands of Rasulullah SAW, a small boy. who also died in his hands. Right, so, you know, we, 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 cannot, we have not seen any of these things. Whereby children die in your hands. Right, sick, right, fall sick, die. Fall sick, die. Subhanallah. So Rasulullah SAW, so he came back to the death, the, the, the news of the death of his daughter Sayyidina Ruqayya. right? So at this time, right? Uh, also, we will see. Okay, uh, inshallah, next week or the week thereafter, we will speak about the the wedding, right, or the marriage of Sayyidina Fatima to Sayyidina Ali. It happens during this time. Right? Sayyidina Fatima Zahra will marry Sayyidina Ali around this time, right? So, but before that, we're going to speak about this. Uh, tribe Bani Qainuqa. So the Jews, there are three types, three three tribes of the Jews in Medina. All of these Jews, the three the three tribes, they actually pledge peace with Rasulullah Islam and allegiance to Rasulullah Islam. Right, one by one, they will break their pledge. One by one, they will they will betray, and they'll be treacherous, and they'll break their pledge. Right. So the first one, they will do so is Bani Qainuqa. Bani right. So what about this 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 uh, group of Jews? Okay, for them, they were the tribe of Jews that lived in Medina itself, right? The other 
the other Jews lived on the outskirts of Medina. They had their own fortresses on the outskirts. Bani Qainuqa lived within Medina, but they had their own, also their own neighborhood. And their own fortresses. Like they had their huge buildings and whatever. They have their own space right, in Medina. This uh, group of Jews, they may want from the very beginning. Right? They, they are not even secretive about their hatred of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From the very beginning, they showed very clearly they did not like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They hated him. Right? They, were, they were loud about it. Right? And they were very uh, arrogant about it. And they used to sneer at the Muslims. Right? And they used to make fun of the Muslims whatsoever. Right? And when the Muslims won the battle, right? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I went out to the Jews, right, this uh, Jews, and said, you know, all Jews, be Muslim. Because of course the Jews know that it's the truth, right? right? Be Muslim before what happened right, to the disbelievers at Badr happens to you. You know, be Muslim. Do not, you know, fight the truth. And the Jews said, Oh, Muhammad, do you think don't, you know, the Jews said, Oh, Muhammad, don't be deluded, lah, eh? right? Don't be deluded by what happened at Badr. You all fought Meccans, and everybody knows that Meccans are not, you know, uh, cut out for war, right? They're traders. The Meccans don't know how to fight, right? So don't be deluded that you want them. They're not good fighters anyway. Right, so the Jews didn't know how arrogant they are. They said, don't, 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 la yaghurran, la yaghurran naka. And, uh, min nafsika, annaka qatalta nafran, min Quraysh, kanu aghma, aghmaran, la ya'arifun ala qita. Right, that is the, how arrogant they are. And they said, don't, don't, don't delude yourself that you, that you want a people who don't know how to fight. And said, if it was us, if you have fought us, you will really see who can fight. Uh, they were arrogant. No, we can fight. You know, you want Meccans. Who, who can't win Meccans? You think I would think, you know, like Meccans are easy. Yeah, they're not fighters. Like, you all, you know, you want to fight? Fight with us. Or we will show what, we will show you all what is war. Right? So, of course, when they said that, right, that showed their animosity against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, and they began to show a lot of hatred. They began to hurt the Muslims. They began to uh, they began to, 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 to insult the Muslims. They had their own marketplace. And there's a story of a woman, uh, of the Muslims, eh, who went to the marketplace. She was covered up right, in the hijab. And she covered her face. So the Jews, see what they did. The Jews, she went to the marketplace of the Jews to buy stuff. Right? And they kept like making fun of her. And they were making fun of her. And say, take out your face, take out your, 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 your face, your face cover. You want to see your face. Take it out, take it out. And she just ignored them. You know, she was just doing her own stuff, you know, buying stuff from the marketplace, right? So she, you know, and the marketplace was like this. The marketplace was on the floor. So the people were just, you know, uh, spread a, a mat and they put their stuff on the mat and they will sell, right? So when you want to buy, you squat. You squat and then you look at the stuff that you want to buy and you take, and then you stand up thereafter. So this woman, right, she was doing her marketing and she was squatting like this, right? So she squat right, to see the stuff. So while she was squatting, you know, and her clothes are long, right? A Jew from the back took the end of her clothes and pinned it to her clothes on the, on the back. Can you imagine? That means the end of your, so the end of your clothes here, I right, pinned it up to your shoulder here. Yeah, high, quite high, right? So when she got up, and she did, she got up, her whole back exposed. Can you imagine what happened? Can you imagine what happened? She right. She was wearing pants, alhamdulillah. They don't want to talk about it. Right. So, so she, was, she was wearing, at least she was wearing undergarments. Right. So she took the, so she was, she was sitting there, she was, she, was, she, was, uh, she, was, she was buying stuff. She didn't realize that they came from the back, took the back of her, of her juba, right? And pinned it up to her shoulder. Yeah. So when she got up like this, you can make the whole of your back is pinned to your is pinned to your to your shoulder. That means your whole back is exposed, and everybody behind was watching because they knew what he was doing. So they all are making fun of her. So she got up and she realized that her whole undergarments all exposed. So of course she was she tried to to undo herself, right? Like, all exposed. So uh, there was a Muslim there like, who helped her. Right? And then he hit the Jew. 
There was a man who was there. He hit the Jew, and the Jew fell and died. It's so hard. I was so angry. <laughs> because, I mean, you would be like, like, what are you doing? Why must you do that to her? She didn't even do anything to you. Right? So, I mean, they, they, caused, they caused a fight between the Muslims and the Jews. So they began to fight. And the Jews uh, 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 hit the Muslim back and the Jews came around and, 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 and attacked him and killed him. So now, oh, there's no more treaty now. <laughs> and there's no more, you know, it's funny when I heard the story, and, and, and when the story was so long, so when the woman, you know what happened to her, right? And she stood up, right? And then uh, Rasulullah asked the Sahaba, was she wearing pants? <laughs> at least she was, like, look, the underwear inside there, at least something inside under your juba, right? And then uh, she was, yes, she was wearing pants. And then Rasulullah said, may Allah have mercy on the woman who wears pants. <laughs> Right, and then, no, they, they, they tell that to us in, 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 in Darim. So when you go out and you wear jubba, right, don't go out without pants. Right, so your jubba is long. At least have some pants inside. <laughs> you never know if you're going to fall. Right, or the wind blows. Or, you know, like, at least you're not, you're not, you're not like, like having underwear inside. Right, <laughs> wear pants, pants. Right, that's one I know. And another thing, all and of course, the hadith. May Allah have mercy on the woman who wears pants. No, no, really. Yeah, it's a hadith. Right? Allah have mercy on the woman who wears pants. Right? So when you wear pants, Alhamdulillah, have mercy on me. <laughs> right? But of course, we don't mistake the hadith right? by someone saying, Oh, see, then it's not sunnah to wear juba. Wear pants only. Right? No, what the hadith means is that wear pants under your juba. You wear juba, pants under the juba. Right? I mean, that is, it's a sunnah. Right? And then they say the earth is shy. The earth, eh? the earth is shy. If a person walks on top of the earth and he can look into him and see his underpants. <laughs> the earth is shy. Because <laughs> the earth can see you. Eh? <laughs> right. So you should be wearing pants. You know, at least you honor the earth. You know, you know walk around you know, without pants inside. <laughs> Have something inside. You know, so I don't know. You know Islam teaches us um, uh, modesty. Right. So, I mean, ever since I heard that, I was like, you know, no, always having my pants. <laughs> and I guess it was really, it, you really don't know when. Right? And sometimes when I, when I teach, and I'll be very honest, eh, when I teach, because people always change the way they sit when they are in class, right? So, I have seen people who are not wearing pants inside, wearing juba, right? So, when they raise their legs during class, oh, I, and then they move here, and they move there, and they move up. I can see their thigh, right? That means from, from above their knees, I can actually see the, the flesh is all there. And I just like, just see, <laughs> they want to look there. A woman, I mean, they're women, but they don't realize that their juba, because when you sit down, sometimes your juba gets pulled up. Right? And then it's, it's exposed. Sometimes it's like, yeah, okay, wearing pants, right? Okay, so it's exposed here. So these are all my these are all pants now. Right? So if I say that like, my juba is like that, and then I see, so you see it comes up to my knees. Right? I mean, you don't really take, take care of how your juba is wearing pants inside. Lah. Right, so sometimes when you do this, like, so you see, this whole part is exposed. This whole part is exposed, right? If it was not pants, it's, just, it's your leg, basically. <laughs> so I have seen people in my class, <laughs> but I see their legs. I think you're saying that we have... the hadith. No, I don't know, like, yeah, actually, I should just make them hear the hadith. Right, so anyway, anyway, these Jews, at that point, they broke the, they broke the covenant. Right, because they, they, they did this to the woman. They're not supposed to harm anyone. They harmed the woman. Right? And then there, there was this fight that happened. Now, what, so now what is the ruling on them? Right? They have now betrayed the believers. Right? They, are, they are no longer, under, no longer at peace. The believers, they have made it very clear they're not at peace. So Rasulullah SAW commanded the believers, go to the fortress of Bani Qainuqa, the Jews. So they went and they circled the fortress. They circled the houses lah, of Bani Kainuka. And the Jews always live in fortress. They always live. Fortress basically means houses made of stone. Right? So they, they, they are very well protected. Right? So they circled it. You know, it's called the Hisar. So like, it's, you call it, they call it an, what's the word in, in English? A siege. Yes. Yes. Uh, they, 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 they laid siege on the uh, Jews. They laid siege on the Jews. And they laid siege for 15 days. Eventually, the Jews uh, uh, surrendered. They surrendered. 
So the Muslims captured them, right? Confiscated their wealth, right? And then, of course, these Jews had alliance with Abdullah bin Ubay. You remember who he is? He is the chief of the Munafiq, the chief of the hypocrites, right? So they had the Jews, Bani Qanuqa, they actually have alliance with Khazraj. And Khazraj, their leader is Abdullah bin Ubay, who is the chief of the Munafiq, the Munafiqun. Right, so, so Allah bin Ubay spoke on behalf of the Jews saying, Ya Rasulullah, don't do anything harsh to the Jews. Don't do anything harsh to them. Right? And Rasulullah said, uh, and he helped Rasulullah's uh, pocket, you know, his, his clothes. And Rasulullah said, let go of me. And then he said, no. And Rasulullah said, let go of me. He said, no. And he said, I will not let go of you until you, you assure me that you will not treat them harshly. It means, you know, be gentle on them. So you also say, okay. So he said to the Jews, all of you, get out of Medina. It means that no execution, no execution, nothing. Just get out. Okay, get out of Medina. Right? So all of them, right, they had to pack all that they had, right, and they had to march out of Medina. Right? They actually marched somewhere near uh, Syria, and they went up. Right, and they actually camped, they had their own settlement there. Right, but eventually it was said that most of them uh, perished anyway. Right, they perished. Right? Then this is tribe of the Jews, they perished. Right? So that is the, 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 the end of the first tribe. The first tribe gone. You're going to see the next two tribes coming up. Right? They, they're gonna, they're gonna, each of them are going to show their ugly side. Right? And they're going to show that, draw some, that, you know what, no matter what zaman you're in, they're the same. Right, so Zawan Nabi Musa and I said in the Quran, Allah also speaks about their, 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 their example a lot in Nabi Musa's time. A lot of stories about the Jews. To the time of Rasulullah, same story. To our time, same story. The same story over and over again. Right, yeah, same story. Right, uh, treachery, deceit, lies, uh, uh, con- controlling the economy. Like controlling money, you know, all these things, making fun of other people, you know, all, all, all these things that you just show yourself over and over again. Allah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows best. All right? So this happened to them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But of course, you know, those who are peaceful, those who are peaceful. Like that. And of course, as you mentioned, that uh, as the Allah says in Surah Ali Imran, of the Al Kitab, there are those who believe and do righteous deeds, you know, and they believe in the Prophet. And in the time, there were also those who believe and do righteous deeds and believe the Prophet. And also in our time, there will be also those right, who are. So there's always just this few right, who are good. Right, but the majority, right, they will, you will see of them what Allah has described right, of them. Right, so Allah, okay, any, any, any questions? I'm going to end now. Any questions? No, eh? Right, so that's the end of our Battle of Badr. Inshallah, next week. We will go into the wedding of Sayyidina Fatima Zahra, right, and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, right, and then uh, we'll go into the battle of Uhud, insha'Allah. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. There are many battles in the life of Rasulullah Sallam. Throughout nine years that he was in Medina, right, almost every, every other month he would go out for battle. Almost every, so he never sit, sat in Medina more than two months in a row. Like almost every other month, sometimes he will go back to the back battles. He will come back, within two days, go out again. Come back, within two days, he go out again. The right, so, the, hmm? the, the tribes around. So usually battles, not that they will fight. Not that they will fight, but they will go out to da'wa or go out to, to discuss. And to, because now they are a new, they are a new um, community. Right, so they are going out to make uh, el- uh, pledges of allegiance. Right, they are going to you know, make peace treaties because now it's a lot of politics coming in and so it's necessary for them to go out and have you know a peaceful environment around so they're able to freely move and do their da'wah and so you will see this like as, as, as we go along right so Allah wa ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha anna allaha yarzuqa lamin a'iman nafi' wa ala khalis maqbul wa husna ta'ani dalala ala al-huda wa yusaru biya qabal nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam wa sallam wa al-arwahi wa alimina وما شيخنا وزد بالحقوق علينا وإلى حضر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الفاتحة